Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 20. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and download the workbook. YouTubers Love Excel 17 to 21. Hey, this is number 20. YouTubers Love Excel number 20. One of our fellow YouTubers asked, hey, I got a bunch of cash flows and the rate of increase is not steady, but it increases at a steady rate each period. So for this, uh, creating the cash flows with a formula based on assumptions, we're actually going to have to create the rate of increase and the cash flows itself. As always, when you're doing analysis like this, set all your variables, the numbers that don't change, that, that can change in an assumption area, and then build all your formulas on those inputs. Then it's easy to change one of these inputs and see how whoosh, Excel is magic. Hey, let's create our rate first. Actually, let's look up here. Cost of asset, 500 bucks. Cash flow for the first year is 100. Actually, we can come down here and say equals the cash flow. Enter. The quarterly rate of return, that's our discount rate, is 3.75%. Our quarterly start growth rate is 5.575%. Uh, so I'm going to click down here and say equals and click on that start rate. Enter. Now, our increment. This is the amount which this initial rate will increase each period. So we got to, before we can calculate our formula for cash flows, we have to calculate a formula for rate equals one cell above plus our increment. And I have to lock that using my F4 key twice. That formula, when I control enter, I can click with uh, on the fill handle. And when I see my angry rabbit or my crosshair, I click and drag and drag down. So now we have all of our rates. Okay, and if I blow that up a little bit, that was just our uh, begin rate, enter F2. You can see there it's looking one above plus locked on our increment. Now we're going to use a similar formula for our cash flow here. Equals the initial cash flow, which is one cell above, times, and then in parentheses, one plus, and we click one cell to the left. Since they're changing each period, we set up our rates here, and that can be a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. That formula will work all the way down. Always looking one up for the last cash flow, and always multiplying times one plus the rate that we've calculated one cell to the left. To the right, I mean. Control Enter, and then I'm going to double click and send it down. I go to the last cell. I hit F2. Sure enough, the green one there, the blue one's there. I click here in F2, and sure enough, that got it too. All right, that's how to create some cash flows based on a variable rate. But now let's see our net present value equals net present value. Net present value is great when the cash flows are all different, but the timing between each cash flow is the same. Our rate, this is quarterly, is right there, comma. Our cash flows, I'm going to click on the first one and then Control-Shift-Down arrow close parentheses, and I'm going to Shift Enter. Shift Enter puts the formula in the cell and moves your cursor up one. I'm going to click right there. That formula is not right. F2, because I then have to subtract the initial cost. That formula will calculate the net present value. Control Enter. Now let's change our inputs and admire our work here. Our uh, initial growth rate is going to be 0.5. Oops. Uh, yeah, 0.5. And if I add a percent, oh, I'm typing. I can never type. 0.5. If I add the percent, percent that's a half of percent. And the increment is going to be 0.15%. That's 0.15 of 1%. I'm sorry. That's 0.15%. And there we go. We have. We can change it. We can change our. Uh, rate of return also, let's say that this should be 2%. Notice something different there. When I typed in a 2 for a percent, the percent symbol remained because it was pre-formatted. But as soon as I st start typing a decimal, you got to be careful because it gets rid of it. If you typed 0.5 here, it would record it as 50%. But we, So we had to make sure to put our uh, percentage symbol. Enter. And there we go. We can see our inputs. Um, 
when we update our inputs, all of our rates change, all of our cash flows, and our net present value. Let me uh, emphasize that once more. Let's click in this cell. If I type 0.5, notice how the percentage symbol does not come up. If I hit Enter, it thinks that's 50%. So even though it's pre-formatted, like for instance up here when I said 2, because I didn't put a decimal, type a decimal in first, the percentage format from the pre-formatting work. But here when you type a, a point five, it's programmed to accept that as 50%. So if you want 0.5%, you actually have to type in 0.5%. All right, we'll see you next YouTuber Love Excel.